back up to a new video in my home automation series and in this short video I just want to go through the new additional features in the EVLink cast and the web application. Just as a reminder in order to access this web interface and the cast functionality you need uh, one of the paid uh, EVLink plans so I'm using the advanced plan which is about 10 bucks per year and that gives you access to all these features and uh, when I go to the cast functionality which is like you know like a web dashboard you can also run this as an application or an Android and an iOS device. Okay so let me just go back to the main screen and I'm just going to move my head around here so you can see most of the screen here. Actually let me just do it here so we can see some of the icons which are up here. Um, first let's just go through the um, you know the main sort of like a device list screen and um, just like with any of the uh, any upgrade there are more devices that are supported in the EVLink cast so one of the new device which is supported is uh, the new uh, present sensor uh, which is um, so is a, well the new pre uh, in the new uh, Zigbee sensors and I actually don't have uh, uh, well I have the present sensor but, oh, actually it's this one which is offline, so I must have moved it, I think I moved it to the iHost and it's not linked to my um, NS Panel Pro at the moment. So that is now supported and you can, you know, uh, it, it will show you whether uh, presence is detected or not. But the other thing which is also supported now is the TRV, which I don't have. So that's the thermostatic uh, Zigbee valve, uh, which is a fairly new product and that got support. But on the other hand, there is, uh, there is always new enhancement to the user layout. So there are more devices are supported with all the different you know, controls. For example, uh, for color light bulbs, now you have all the controls of color temperature, color wheels, uh, intensity, and also the color. So uh, these are obviously things which are getting added uh, uh, as and when new devices are available. So you can see all the different controls. So, and uh, yeah, the basic just have basic controls. But again, if I go back to, you know, sensors, then again, we can see history uh, for, you know, years or month, and I can scroll down and I can see humidity as well. So these are sort of getting enhanced in parallel with what you can see on the iHost as well. I think last time we look at the iHost and how these screens look like uh, there. Uh, one other thing which I also like is that now we can also edit scenes and then make changes to the scenes from here. So these are the scenes that you create on the EVLink application and also you can now change them here and vice versa. So you still have the name, you know, in which home they work, you can turn on the notification, you can also create all the different triggers and you still have all the different options available here and you can still have all the actions as well so you can see you know smart devices delay and and the smart scenes and the webhook is a new thing which i haven't played around just yet so that's probably going to come in uh, in a follow-up video and what i also like that this seems to support all the additional uh, so all the you know the extra things as well so um, if i select the sunset scene you know for this uh, light I can not only just uh, select whether it should be switched on and off but I can also control brightness color temperature and that applies to all the all basically all the devices which have all these uh, special things oops confirm I don't think I have one for the um, uh, I think this doorbell one yeah Oh no, it, 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 that was uh, set up for the TX Ultimate. But I had something which uh, I think it was controlling something on the NS panel. So you can still, uh, from this screen, you can create like, you know, for the S NS panel to, you know, play your sound or something like that. So all the function is supported here. One additional thing that we got here is that we have this icon up, up on the top. And this is basically a scene log and that allows you to look at how your scenes were triggered whether something has failed um, so you could see that uh, you know i had well that's wednesday uh, that was yesterday but today uh, for another video i cl clicked on this quick watering but then the ch4 pro was not plugged in because it's it's in one of my test boards obviously that action failed uh, but then all the things uh, executed correctly it looks like it 
I press this quick watering again and uh, but other than that is oh I think this quick watering is set up on a timer because it fails on 4 uh, 4 a.m. every single time so I probably have to find a scene somewhere which is uh, yeah you see it's right here oh it's a uh, that's interesting yeah it looks like we have some 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 issues with uh, time zones because this one is set to start at 4 a.m. But according to logs, it was actually executed at 4 a.m. Yeah, so maybe it's like a summertime wintertime issue because uh, now we are in wintertime and maybe I set the scene when we were in summertime. So there is some sort of, uh, you know, the, maybe the data is stored or the dates are stored in UTC. And obviously they don't maybe don't take into account where uh, we are in summertime or in, you know, the daylight saving time or not. Okay, that's a sidetrack. So that's what I want to say about the scenes and the scene log. I think that's definitely useful, especially if you are looking at issues and you can't really figure out what uh, if something is going wrong or something is not triggering. But then at least you can tell that, you know, maybe something was actually triggering, but then it couldn't execute because uh, the device was not available or some other issues. Maybe I'm just going to skip the cast screen. So we have some additional functions here. So there is a central screen where you can see all your devices and you can see which one of them require firmware update. So you can initiate the firmware update from here, which is nice. And you also have some settings, which uh, while well, at the moment it just only contains the release notes on, you know, what new in some of the feature releases. Obviously you don't have to upgrade the, uh, uh, the web um, site. So maybe it worked it's a good idea just to come here from time to time to see what's uh, what's new. And finally, on the cast screen, we also have some new functionalities. It is mostly related to um, uh, more devices are now supporting the double screen layout. So in my previous video, I mentioned that for some devices, now you can select whether you want to display them in in uh, in a, like a small tile, for example, this 4CH Pro, or what you want to have it like on a bigger screen. So you can see that this 4CH Pro actually takes up quite a lot of uh, screen real estate. So you can show all the four outputs. But uh, if I expand like this clock, then it shows like a different you know UI layout. And if I um, I was just playing with this uh, L2 light strip, so you can compress it and it just shows like you know just single button to turn it on and off but you can expand it to, so it takes up two times two space but then you have access to um, you know instant changes of the um, brightness and color and some of the other settings so you know more support more customer more support for you know more devices to have uh, two different sizes and uh, um, more customizability for you to you know create a different screen oh actually i already had oh i had another strip here which had the small layout and now it has the big layout and I can expand for example this one as well so this is a light bulb so you can see how they um, you know adding this support for these different modes uh, from time to time and now I have to rearrange all my other stuff because they got moved obviously there is more device support here as well uh, I don't have the TRE so I don't see any new items here uh, since uh, they were ex existed before as well the charts we still get you know power consumption and temperature uh, measurement uh, uh, functionality so as new devices come in they get added here as well but I only have these devices uh, the Zigbee devices are now linked to I think mostly my iHost so this is why they are not showing up here and finally in the settings I think I've already covered in the previous video that now you can customize the background color which was uh, added recently okay and if i look at the main screen as well how it looks like so now you can see that uh, i can control well you don't really see it but uh, that is being changed and i can you know change the color temperature as well or oh sorry that was in color temperature mode so uh, it's a, uh, so i can change it to color temperature mode or i can change it to any of the color mode and i can you know pick my colors as well so you have these three screens and um yeah, you can see consumptions, temperatures, and uh, yeah, these two devices are on, but nothing really connected to them. So this is why you can't really see a lot of uh, 
um, the basically the history. And yeah, the control works just fine, as you would expect. And I have the quick watering, which actually, yeah, it triggers a scene on the CH Pro. So now it is working. So if I go back to, um, let, yeah, don't save the changes. So I just want to get out X. And if I go back to the scenes, uh, I don't, yeah, now quick watering is successfully executed. Well, it's not execute. it's not completed yet, but uh, the trigger is definitely executed because it just changes these uh, channels on and off. Okay, I think that would be all. Um, if you are interested in any of these, I'm going to leave links to the EVLink web and also the um, EVLink cast in the video description and also give you the link where you can sign up for this uh, advanced plan as well. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.